So I want to thank you all for coming today. Finally, we have a break in the weather that made this possible for me as well as you, I'm sure, um, traveling in from Chicago. I'm really enthused and excited that the library has um, digitized these images because I personally think it was a very important project to do at an important time um, when Lake Orion was changing pretty rapidly, um, converting from a cottage community to a year-round residential community. So I'm sure you all recognize this familiar um, signpost at the township borders testifying um, to Lake Orion's heritage as a vacation destination. And that is what I'll be talking about today. Um, so on the screen, um, this brochure is from the original program in 1991. And I don't expect you to be able to read it, but it's a photograph of the cottage that I grew up with. Hi. Um, in here in Lake Orion. And my parents bought it the year I was born, so I knew the cottage every summer of my life. I was spending it here in, in uh, Lake Orion. Um, the project was spurred by the recognition that the cottages around the lake that I had admired all my life were suddenly changing. Um, they were being removed for new construction, and they were creating a new face on the lake and a new place um, on the lake as well. Vanishing as a cultural resource, the 1991 project was designed to document the remaining cottages and their uses through photographs and audio taped interviews with cottage owners. I approached the Orion Township Library um, about the project idea, and Linda Sickles, who was then the director, got approval from her board to apply for a grant to conduct the project. So in November 1990, we uh, submitted our grant proposal to the Michigan Humanities Council. We were awarded our grant in January 1991 um, to conduct the one year long project. That being said, I skated around the lake that winter, um, identifying the remaining cottages on the lake, um, and then began to research the property owners, and then invited their participation with the project. So what you'll see um, in this project is certainly not all the cottages that were on the lake at that time, but they were the cottage, cottages that property owners agreed to participate with us. And that turned out to be 40 cottages on the lake. Um, and of the 40 cottages, we conducted interviews with half of the property owners and also some people who um, uh, were locals, as you'll hear. Uh, Kirk Architecture in Detroit at that time um, consulted on the projects to prepare the architectural styles that describe the cottages. Kim and Bradley Winther, who are here today, um, Kim at the time was employed here at the library, and um, her husband uh, did the photography that we'll be looking at today for this project. So it's Bradley Winther's photographs that are archived for this project. So now, why go to all this trouble to talk about the history of Lake Orion? You might ask. But the reason you're here is probably because you are interested and know that Lake Orion had an important place um, in the Midwest um, in the first part of the turn of the century. In the press, it was termed as the Venice of the Midwest, Michigan's most beautiful resort, the Paris of Detroit, and Lake Orion the Beautiful. Truly, it was. And created by damming Paint Creek for a grist mill in 1837, the larger islands on the lake served as summer camps for religious assemblies called Chautauquas, beginning in the 1870s. And this is really what brought people to this area. And there was a launch um, with small boats that would take these people out to the islands for these religious assemblies. It was first Park Island, and then later um, it was Bellevue Island. But it was John Winters in the early 20th century who recognized the potential of the lake and subdivided its shores for the first cottages. He built two prominent hotels and brought electricity, passenger boats, and the inner urban railway to Lake Orion, promoting it as a summer resort. In 1911, he developed a long-standing amusement park called Park Island. It made Lake Orion famous as a destination for visitors in the Midwest until the 1930s Depression. Because of its popularity, lake lots were quickly sold and developed by his Lake Orion Summer Homes Company. He built hundreds of summer cottages, built to order in 10 days, they advertised. Wow. I know. 
This was the start of the flourish of summer cottage living on Lake Orion. And here we have our first image. Um, cottage number one, it's located at 200, 200 and a half uh, Pelton's Point. Now I didn't get a chance to run around the lake and see which cottages are still here and which aren't. I'm not sure about this one, but I'm, I'm got some information that we think it's already been redeveloped. Um, but this cottage was built in the 1880s, so it predates John Winter's um, takeover of Lake Orion. But it's still a summer cottage built on the lake with the large porch. Um, you can see the dormer windows over the porch. And then the cut field stone uh, foundation on rubble, which um, always indicates a, an earlier structure. This cottage is probably the most different looking because it's the closest to the, the downtown of Lake Orion. The other cottages are all further away and, and they have a different style. This almost looked like it could have been you know, a, a downtown Lake Orion house, but again, it was built as a summer cottage. Okay, thank you. Okay. Oh, in the back. The way this is organized, again, speaking to the front being on the lake and the back being on the road, um, we'll show views of the front to the side where possible and then end with the, the image of the back. But the interesting thing is that the back always looks so different from the front, and the back is usually less attractive than the front, which is on the lake side. So keep that in mind. Thank you. Um, the next cottage is at 186 Britain. Um, again, it has green asphalt siding over what would have been a wood clapboard um, frame cottage. It had some remodeling in some time done to it in terms of the molded block foundation, which you can see maybe in the next slide. Um, the molded block was real um, common, I should say, as a building material in the 1940s. And that is the time that a lot of these earlier cottages were remodeled. But this shows that transition in time. And um, you can see all the windows. Again, these windows would have been open screened openings in the cottage and in, the, in its original state. Um, another characteristic is the, um, what they call those, the outriggers that are exposed um, under the roofing there. That's kind of a common characteristic of, of Lake Orion cottages. Next. Thank you. And then here's the back. Again, you would almost never suspect that this cottage sits on a lake when you look at the back, but that's the back. Another interesting thing about stairs, you know, cottage, um, Lake Orion is full of slopes and hills and, and inclines and declines. So a lot of these cottages, um, had these long loping steps, as I call them, uh, made of poured concrete. And it's just interesting that many of them still had that in the 1990s when I was running around. This next cottage is um, 200 to 204 of Britain. I did get by this one today. Um, it looks like it's been completely remodeled, but not really changed, which is, I mean, that the same footprint of the place is intact. And that is a really nice thing. Um, at the time that I visited this, the owner um, was very proud of, the, of her plans for remodeling. I don't know if she still owns this cottage, or this place, I should say, but it, it really is nice in terms of the uh, wrapped around screened in porch that it had on three sides. Um, and it's, it made it look really big, but then again, the inside of any of these cottages is pretty small. It's just the porches that made it look so big. Um, next, thank you. And then this is the back of the cottage. Again, the way this is positioned, it was really hard to get um, a view of the whole back, but you can see the wraparound porch on the side there. So, and the um, distinctive clapboard siding, as we call it, that so many, it's very inexpensive wood siding that was manufactured um, certainly before the turn of the century that was used on these cottages. And then we have next, 344 Heights. It was formerly was named the Bluebird. Um, it's considered a bungalow with craftsman influence. Um, it has vinyl siding over the six inch clapboard siding. Um, and it has a porch, front porch on it that was built um, over the original closed in porch. But part of that can still be seen 
behind it with um, the windows um, that go all the way around the, the structure and through to the back. So again, here's the roadside view of the cottage, completely different from the front. Okay, next, thank you. And next door to that, in 1991, was the Dooch House, um, a very distinctive and unique um, cottage on the lake um, at 348 Heights Road. It had the uh, extended fascia on the back of the cottage. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, on the front of the cottage. Um, it had its name on the cottage as well. And in the next slide, you can see the um, the battered walls, um, the way the, the bottom of the cottage comes out at the base, um, a, a typical Dutch style uh, with a cement block foundation. So this cottage actually was built in the 1920s um, originally and kept its same form all that time. Next. And here is the, the back of the cottage. Again, uh, looking somewhat different from the front, but you can still tell that it's the Dutch house. The next cottage is Wakanda at 352 Heights. And I did not get by to see if this is still there. I think it is. Well, I hope so anyway, because this cottage um, was called the Great Spirit of the Waters. And this is the cottage that Helen Gerlich uh, was talking about in the tape there. And it's considered a side gable with craftsman details. In again, you can see, um, well, not so much in this slide, but maybe in the next. So um, this, again, has the typical clapboard siding on it. It hasn't changed hardly at all, except um, a foundation was put on, I guess, apparently a newer foundation even recently. And then it had a bedroom put on the opposite side, which you might be able to see in the next slide. I'm not sure. Um, from the back of the house, you can see on the right um, a little addition put on for an extra bedroom. Okay, next. The next cottage is at uh, 411 Heights Road, Avon Villa, which is still there. But I was dismayed to see that the name Avon Villa has begun to um, erode off the face of the building. So you can't see that it's Avon Villa anymore. This um, building and one nearby it, both made of this molded block um, material, was actually made for some of the uh, Chautauqua speakers that came for, the, for them to stay in rather than camping, as most people did on the, on the uh, Bellevue Island for the Chautauquas. Um, and it, it's made of complete molded concrete block, which is kind of not common on the lake. I think there's only two of them, in fact. So this is one of them. And you can see from the side um, how it fits into the landscape of the the hill there, which is another thing that cottages did. The way that they were built, um, cottages were built on a lot. Um, they simply decided where they wanted to put them, cut down the trees, used the, the tree stumps as piers for the support of the cottage, and then built on top of it. Um, this being a concrete block wouldn't have been of that nature, but the fact is it still fit into um, the site rather than consuming the whole property like so many homes do on the lake today. So next, I think is the, the other side, you can get a good view of the molded block on this view um, of Avon Villa. Next. So, and here we are on Armada Island, which I did drive by today, and it's still there, and I was so happy, but it, I didn't doubt it. It seems like places on islands would change the least rapidly. And um, 490 Armada Island, um, Dutch colonial is the architectural description for it. It has what's called a gambrel roof, a very distinctive roof. It's a cruciform plan, which means if you looked at it from the top, you'd see a, a cross form on it. And wood um, clapboard siding, which is eight inch, um, rather wide um, wood siding, but it is still in its original form and still there and great to see. The next one is uh, next door to it and I noticed I think it's had some remodeling done on the exterior but still 
Um, this cottage already had had remodeling done on it in 1991 to put on that um, aluminum siding and close in the front porch. But still, it has its original form. And um, prominent on this one is its chimney on the side there. And here's the back of the cottage. So the next one is on Bellevue. Um, again, this was a year-round residence by the time um, I interviewed the owner in 1991. It's considered a side gable cottage with craftsman influence. It has asphalt siding and then the molded block. Um, foundation, which probably was put on much later after the original cottage on top was uh, constructed. The way Bud Shar, um, described it also is that because many of these cottages were built into hills, the front of them was basically put on piers um, and the, the back of it set into the hill and then people would put their boats and things under the, the front um, when they left for the summer. So this would have had that original form, but at some point after the 40s, it had the molded block foundation put on, which opened it up into another room in the basement. And um, I'll always remember that the woman that lived here uh, had her kitchen in this basement, in the concrete block section, which I always thought was unusual, but um, that's how the cottage was organized. And again, it has loping steps, as I call them, on the right, um, leading down to the lake. And that's from the roadside, again, looking very unlike the front of Is the, that place. the same place. Yeah, it's the same place. So, yep. Okay. And the next cottage is um, 120 Bellevue Island on Bellevue. And I don't know how many of you have noticed this place. I don't think I noticed it for decades. But when I started looking at cottages in the winter, it really um, stuck out because in the next slide you'll see it's an octagon shape. And it's very unusual um, that it, it has this um, wraparound front porch uh, in the octagon shape. And, um, and again, it has that clapboard siding. And if you look at it from the back, you'll see that it's completely different from the front. And I'm sorry that slide is so dark, but um, it has a completely different look from the front of it, once again. Um, it was considered a homestead octagon style by our architect. Thank you. In our next um, slide, here we have John Winter's original cottage. Um, he built it, I think it was 1901, actually. Um, it is 1901, it's in my notes. Um, when I interviewed the owners of this place in 1991, they had been the second, ge the second generation owner um, since John Winter's time. Where is this? Oh, it's Winter's Point, also called Comfort Point, and it's near the bridge. Oh, yeah, and it's on Bellevue Island. Now, I haven't driven by to see if this is still there, but it was always a prominent cottage growing up in Lake Orion. Um, it has a simple hipped roof. It has a, a dormer, which is the window in the front, front center that's also hipped, which means it's all four sides come to a point. Um, it has that wide, full front porch with an upper level front porch as well. It is a little fancier. It has Tuscan columns. And, um, and of course, it's been aluminum sided um, at some point in time. But this was John Winter's original cottage. And he actually had an office in the lower level there, as explained to me by the owners when I interviewed them. And he would take one of the passenger boats into town and catch the Detroit Inner Urban, which was the railway into Detroit, and go to work every day. So um, this was his domain. And of course, being on a point, it had a beautiful view of, of the lake um, from three different views. So that's a side view. And then at the back. The next slide is on uh, Detroit, 618 Detroit. Um, this is on Bellevue Island. It was known then as the lighthouse because it had uh, a lighthouse built on the right, you can see projecting up. Um, it has a circular, circular 
cupola on the front. Um, Garrett, you would know, cupola. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> um, and they were, that was an addition made sometime later, but it's a very interesting um, structure that was initially built as a cottage and then these kind of individual expressions came out in the, the architecture of the place. This also is on Bellevue Island. And in the next slide, you'll see the uh, cobblestone um, foundation used in the building materials for the building. And again, some loping steps on the right there. And in the next slide, from the back, you can see that um, octagonal tower that was built on the back wall. Okay, the next um, place is on Long Point on Bellevue Island. Um, again, remodeled um, at some point in time uh, with pink aluminum siding that you'll see uh, later. It also has this, um, what you call that, uh, perma stone uh, covering on the original foundation. Um, but in the next slide, you'll see it's, it's a pretty sizable structure there on Long Point and with uh, very wide original clapboard siding covered by the um, aluminum siding most, most recently. And then in the back, it has a boathouse. And again, looks very different in the back than it is from the front. Hard to photograph from the back because of all the trees. And there's probably one of Bud Shar's boathouses. So, okay. The next cottage is at 560 Long Point on Bellevue Island. It was known as the Field Cottage. It's considered Greek Revival with Queen Anne details. Um, it's very handsome. And at this time, it was under construction. Uh, re it was not under construction, excuse me. It was under exterior remodeling uh, when I visited, putting on new steps um, and a new uh, porch roof. Here from the side, you see the tri-gable front elevation, um, the three pointed windows up there um, that are distinctive to this. And then and the, br the brick chimney. And on the back, Again, looking completely different than it, it looks from the front. It's really a rather small place, even though it looks uh, very vertical um, and tall. Again, covered with the, um, the six-inch, that's okay, the six-inch covered wood clapboard siding, which was original to the building. The next uh, building is on Long Point as well, on Bellevue Island. It was called Ye Old Homestead. Um, I interviewed artist Win Wisner, whose father owned this cottage, and it was kept in the family. At that time, it was um, the second generation of the Wisner family that was owning it and still using it as a summer cottage. I recall that they were distant. Um, but it is a beautiful place. Again, looking very large you know, on the, the site, but most of that largeness is due to the porch, the wraparound porch that goes around the front and sides. It's actually a rather small um, cottage in itself. <coughs> and we could look at the back, and there's the, si the front and side, and then the back. Oh, there is a view from inside on the porch, which is very nice. I often did not get inside the cottages, only if I was invited. So um, in this case, I was invited, because that, that beautiful wraparound porch was too nice to resist. And the back is, is very simple. Um, because Long Point is on a peninsula, however, and these cottages have water on both sides, I don't know if there's a front and back. But I would think this is the back, so where the boathouses are. So um, I remember uh, talking with artists because it was such an interesting interview. She was over 90 at the time, but she used to swim around Bellevue Island. I just remember her being so proud of, of that when she was in her 20s. So this is 48 Highland on Bellevue Island. It was called the Homer Cottage originally. And originally it was a T-shaped, which had um, a longer front and a, a narrower back. And the original cottage that is T-shaped is in the center of this current structure. Um, one reason it's special is um, in the, well, we can show the back. This is the back and the roadside. It had um, the original well 
that was used by the whole community on Bellevue Island at one time, which is shown in the next slide. There it is. So it was still there. And it's always nice when owners remodel their property and keep some of the vestiges of the original characteristics. And in this case, they did. It has a cobblestone fireplace as well. Um, and you know Lake Orion and Lapeer County in general has a lot of cobblestone structures. I'm sure you've noticed. But a lot of it is evident on the lake still today. So that is that. Next cottage is the Willows. And again, this is on Bellevue Island at 32 Highland. And this place was under construction at the time I visited. Um, certainly you can tell by the debris. Um, you can see the pier um, foundation that was original to the cottage. In this case, it's been replaced with cinder block. But originally, it would have been um, basically propped up on wooden piers. And so you're getting an inside look under the porch just because it happens to be under reconstruction at this time. It was considered a two-story hip roof with craftsman influence. And it's actually rather large looking at it from this side. It, uh, one of its distinguishing factors uh, was what was called the sleeping porch. It has one in the back and it had one in the front. And these would be places where people would sleep because it was cooler and they could get the lake breezes. Um, the next slide is 15 Highland on Bellevue Island, uh, formerly called the Oakland. Uh, Bill O'Brien had a long history here, his, well, starting with his father who bought this place in 1914. But also, um, Bill O'Brien had O'Brien's party store in town. They had their first liquor license. Um, of a store in Lake Orion. Uh, he ran some ice houses for a long time that when he sold them for a roller rink, he, in my interview, he told me that when the person that bought the ice houses was going to tear them down to put in the roller rink, there was still ice stored in the basement. After two years, it was still good to go. So it was kind of amazing. So, but Bill O'Brien, he, he was a character. and. Um, this place, again, if you go back, well, if you mate, <laughs> he was talking in the interview about how, you know, the, the, this used to be porch here and that used to be porch there. Basically what they did was take, took three porches that wrapped around the building and his father um, made interior space out of them, which is so common to create two bedrooms and a bathroom. And because they stayed here longer than most other summer residents, he also winterized it. And uh, Bill and his wife, Mary, bought it and lived there. Um, he, they bought it from his mother and um, lived out their lives there. And uh, his father happened to be rather affluent. So in the next slide that you see is the boathouse that they had. Um, he explained that his father actually uh, built the boathouse and then moved it back to use it as a garage rather than a boathouse. And the upper level there uh, with the quarters for the maid, they had a maid. A lot of people, not a lot I shouldn't say, but um, several cottage owners uh, from the turn of the century and early 20s were actually very wealthy people, which you'll see in some of the cottages. And uh, the, the O'Brien family was actually one of them. So. Uh, in the next slide, I think, you see the, the um, road side of the house, and you can see where they filled in the porches with interior space there. But still a lot of windows, keeping the original footprint and the original form of the cottage. So the next building is um, very interesting. I'm hoping you've all seen it. It's very near to the bridge, the Bellevue Bridge. Um, it's at 571 West Point. It was formerly called Pine Grove Cottage. It, it has all these angular windows. They're called angular bays on, on the second floor. They're diagonal bays that have been added um, to the house just to create all sorts of vantage points for viewing the lake, basically. In the next slide, uh, this would have been an open porch at one time, and it was filled in again uh, to create more interior space. But you get a good view of these angled bays up in the second story. And also in the next slide in the rear building, of the rear of the building, you get 
Well, that's the side of the building. Excuse me. Here comes the yeah. It is very interesting. It is. I guess you don't notice it um, because it's on a point. If you don't have any reason to go down that point, um, you wouldn't see this place. And then from the lake, of course, it's a little hard to see because of all the, the trees. Yeah. But here's the side of the house. And so there's a lot of unique summer homes on the lake still today, and this being one of them, I hope. So, okay. The next would be um, an island that I did drive by today, and it's no longer, but I suspected that because I recall this little cottage was for sale at the time. But it's the island here, it's located at 724 King Circle. It used to be called Mike's Island, and before that it was the Isle of Babette because a, a, a theater person named Babette, who was actually well known, some of you may know more than me who are older than me, but um, this was her cottage and they called it the Isle of Babette. And the, it's a single gable, very simple structure and very tiny. Um, it looks like a miniature city house in some ways. And then from the side, you see this happy dog <laughs> tromping by. But it shows you, it looks almost like a dollhouse. And I think perhaps um, it was built uh, in that way because they were in the entertainment business and it, it was kind of a, um, a place for them to come and play. So next slide is 798 King Circle. <laughs> And this cottage is still there, and I drove by, and um, it's considered a single-story bungalow. And I know that this added deck in the front, which is rather prominent and very well used by the family, but it's actually an extension of the original front porch again that became closed in after they uh, built the deck. And it has... Um, clapboard siding at this time that was still wooden and not covered. And it was a second generation family. What's interesting to know is that it's next door to uh, what we call the Lydic Mansion, which we'll look at next. But um, the owners of this cottage recalled to me, you know, the memories of when this mansion next door used to have their parties with, you know, live music and really fancy people dressed in fancy clothing, and, and they would get to enjoy the ambiance of that. So in the next slide, uh, we have, and this is from the back, and this is from the uh, side. This is the only addition they put on there on the side, again, to create a bedroom, which is often the case. So in the next slide, you'll see this. Yeah, I, I know anyone living on the lake knows this place. I certainly do. It's considered a Spanish colonial bungalow. Um, it's gorgeous, no doubt about it, and, and extensive grounds. Um, it has the stepped gardens leading down to the lake. Um, it's actually a, a wood shingle roof, and it has um, curved eaves, as you'll see in other uh, views. In the next slide, you see a view of leading down to the lake here. And in the next slide, you'll see some of the details. Again, even though it's considered a mansion, um, it still has some rustic characteristics, such as these, what do we call those? I, I keep forgetting the name, outriggers. These outriggers that were shown in, in this slide, exposed on the side. And in the next slide, um, this is a closer up view of the lakeside front of the cottage. Again, seeing the detail of the outriggers and the roof. There's another view from the lake showing the boathouse. And then here is the roadside of the house, which may be more familiar to some, but it shows the uh, curved eaves um, of the roof line. So truly beautiful. And what I'm not telling you is what I know. It was built by Lydic, Mr. Lydic, and he was in the steamship tourism uh, business. Uh, it was built in the 1920s. Um, he was wealthy um, for that reason. It was built as a summer cottage. And then it became owned by the Andrews uh, family. And the Andrews family also um, 
had, they are the ones that the nearby neighbors recall having the parties and hearing the music. And Mr. Andrews had the patent for the gumball machine. And um, I was told that he actually had one of his uh, shops in that boathouse there. So, or at least somewhere on the premises. So anyway, um, it's, it's a beautiful place and still there today. So the next is 546 Shady Oaks, and I did run by that today, and yes, it's still there, and still looks like that, and I was really happy to see that. Um, it's just a big old original cottage. It actually sits back from the, the lake quite a ways, um, and there's another cottage in front of it. And there was a time when they did that on the lake quite a bit. They would have one lot and put two cottages on it. So at some point, it was subdivided. Um, it's considered a bungalow, and it has this, uh, these prominent dorm dormers on the second level. You can see one sticking out on the left on top, um, just, again, serving as a sleeping porch and giving a, a view out. It has skirting on its foundation, so you can't see the skirting, but it's probably a pure foundation like other, um, many other cottages on the lake. And... Again, this was a second generation um, family using it. And it has the exposed clapboard. And in the back, it has, a, oh, the um, outriggers again and the exposed sheathing of the roof. And then in the back, <laughs> oh, the porch, thank you. This is what I get for not running my own PowerPoint. Yeah, this is another um, opportunity I had to be inside and get a view of the, the nice porch and the views that it afforded. And, and that's where people lived in these summer cottages for the most part. The consensus is that the porch is where everything happened. That's where you played cards, that's where you ate, that's where you slept often, and that's where you lived when you were living on the lake. And um, that was the case with this porch as well. And then there's the back. Okay, obviously in addition, because the clapboard siding is a wider um, height than the original cottage part. So, okay. Oh yeah, this cottage. I don't think this is there. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. It was called Stumble Inn. You may not have known that. <laughs> But I um, interviewed the son of the, the original cottage owner here, and he kept it just as his father had, primarily for fishing. It was primarily a, a guy's cottage. And um, very little unchanged. But um, again, it has the exposed outriggers on the eaves, you know, a typ typical characteristic of a cottage, the clapboard siding, and um, the one change he did tell me was that uh, somebody put a, a back porch on it that faced the road at some point in time, one of the family members. But it was used extensively by family. And in the next slide, um, you can see the cinder block um, there where the larger wood clapboard meets the narrower clapboard. And that, again, would have been uh, appear originally when the cottage was built. At some point it was replaced with cinder block and it just happens to be exposed there um, with the wood skirting around the foundation. Oh, this is the back showing the back porch. And a beautiful view of the lake. And this cottage um, was actually being prepped for demolition at the time that I visited in 1991. And I don't know if the same owners still have it. The, the house is definitely gone. Um, but anyway, I interviewed Jim Ingram, my f the first time I actually met him, about Mr. Meddy, because Mr. Meddy was Jim Ingram's neighbor at the time. And Mr. Meddy built this cottage. Um, it's a hip roof with craftsman influence. Again, it has all those characteristics um, in the next slide that you'll see of the exposed outriggers, you know, and, and the sheathing um, of the roof material, and all the windows, windows all the way around, and uh, a lot of these earlier places, of course, had the wooden uh, window covers, which there's a name for, but it's eluding me right now. Um, here's the back of the cottage, and it had a wonderful cobblestone chimney there, 
And what Mr. Mehdi was um, <coughs> known for, uh, in his retirement anyway, uh, was his handiness, and he did a lot of personal um, touches around this place. He had um, a lot of ornaments in the trees. He had cement benches located around and um, cement steps. And he kept the property um, pretty natural in terms of it was in a grove, in a stand of pine trees. But there was one plateau leading down to the lake that he always manicured the lawn, which is an interesting characteristic. But the reason I ask about ownership is because I do know that I'm, there's some neighbors that may be here today that actually uh, placed Mr. Meddy's ashes when he passed away by the bench at the lakeside level. So I was just wondering if that might still be there. But we will find out later. So in that same neighborhood um, at 896 Pine Tree Road is a bungalow. And I don't know if this cottage is still there. It's considered a central gable. Um, the, it has the wraparound porch um, on each side and the exposed outriggers. And it has all the elements of a typical cottage. In the next slide, um, that would be a view. I mean, it's, it's original all the way around. Nothing's been really altered or added to this place. And just a, a detail of the front central gable. And in the next slide, we have, with the cement block foundation replacing what would have been an original pier foundation on this building. And the next is a log cabin. There's not too many on the lake, as you know. And this is no longer there, but it certainly was in 1991 um, on Central Drive at um, 889 Central Drive. It was a notorious log cabin. Yeah. <laughs> it was considered a log cabin revival. Um, it has a windowed front porch, a field stone chimney, and a stone cellar beneath um, the cottage. And of course, it had a beautiful field stone fireplace inside. I remember it as a child, or a teenager, I should say. In the next slide, you can see off the side, it had a little um, <coughs> type of writing room, actually. It was the only spot that really got good sunlight was right there, and that's where they had that um, windowed room. And the uh, log cabin construction is called chinked logs. So that is the construction. There's the great big cobblestone fireplace. And, um, and this would be the roadside of the cottage uh, looking toward the road. Um, this cottage, this is the lakeside of 730 Central Drive. So this is now in Swiss Village, um, as was the log cabin, actually. And it's considered a Swiss chalet style here. It's high up on a hill from the lake. And uh, you can't really see it from this view because of all the trees. But in the next slide, you can see, um, you'll recognize it. I met the guy. Oh, good. He's from Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's still in its original form also, except for this permastone siding that's put on it. Um, and it's a little dark, but it had, has large um, asphalt shingle siding on it originally, and some details that you can't quite see here. But a big place, and again, fieldstone work in the next slide, you'll see um, all the extensive fieldstone work to lead up to the cottage. And the next picture, we have, um, this place has been completely remodeled. I'm not sure if the original structure is part of that remodeling or not, but it originally um, was built by a doctor in the 1940s. It's the, the oldest cottage um, in our collection here, built in 1947. It's considered a tri-gable L, and um, it was built over a boat wall on the lake. And you'll see in the next slide that it was actually built according to some hand-drawn architectural plans on farm and feed letterhead. <laughs> the, the farm and feed letterhead kind of bleeds through the top there, and these drawings were drawn on the back of that um, for the cottage owner. Um, 
It's very similar to a house on stilts, so to speak, except that the boat house um, serves as the foundation of the cottage up above. And there's a drawing for this too in the next slide. And, uh, and then in the next slide you see the back of the cottage with the bay window, prominent bay window. And that also has a drawing to it. So it was kind of distinctive on the lake for a long, long time. That was 560 Baron. It's in Swiss Village. The next um, cottage is on Bridge Street, also in Swiss Village, but on a peninsula. Um, this was originally called the Drewat, and it had an identical twin to it next door to it at one time that burned, um, I think, in the 60s. And it was called the Annette. So this is a case where cottages had names. And I think you probably all know that many cottages had names. But um, one reason they had names, besides being an endearing uh, thing to do, is that there, in Lake Orion had the first inland marine, inland water marine postal system in the state. And we believe in. Um, the United States. So the post office, the postman would need to know where to go to deliver the mail. People kept a mailbox on the end of the dock. And if the, dock, if the cottage had a name on it, then he would know where to deliver the mail. So in this case, it would have been the Druat Cottage. Um, in other cases, it would have been uh, the Wakanda Cottage, etc. So anyway, this cottage is definitely still there. Um, it's second generation ownership and um, the people um, have remodeled it to year round but again keeping it to the original footprint and original form um, so it has all the characteristics of the summer cottage the outrigger outriggers there and the exposed sheathing of the roof and that would be the back of the cottage before the um, remodeling uh, that took place to make it year-round. OK, thank you. And then next door to that was this cottage. Again, the lighting is a little challenging here. But this was a kit cottage. It was built for the Delano family. And one of the Delanos became a brewer. But um, it was a kit cottage. And the family believes it was a Sears kit cottage, which means it was pre-cut um, fabrication where the pieces were all cut and then sent by railway uh, to the destination and in this case it came in on the railroad here in Lake Orion in the winter and then they put it on sleds and drug it over the ice to the building site and then built it in the spring and that would have been in 1915 um, and so it still had all its original characteristics, the wood clapboard um, siding, the fireplace. Um, it had nice Sears characteristics inside. As I recall, the doors were all very craftsman. Is that Love Lighthouse oh, yeah. property now? Mm -hmm. And the, the cottage is no longer there, but it's a good example of a pre-cut um, cottage construction on the lake. And there's the back, again on a peninsula, so it has the water on both sides. And the sleeping porch up above in the back. The next slide is on Border Avenue. And Beth and I are still trying to remember where Border Avenue is here on the lake. But it's the Collins Cottage. I know why we don't know. This is on Armada Island. It's Victoria Island, excuse me. That's why we don't know. OK, this is on Victoria Island, the Collins Cottage. I'm hoping, and I believe it's still there. And um, it was, it's a one-story hip roof, um, again, with all the characteristics of a, a one-story cottage, clapboard siding, uh, the front and back porch, lots of porches. And it's very pristine um, in its construction and in its maintenance. And it also has a boathouse. So that might help you recognize it from the lake. But this um, next image is the Noah's Ark that I know everyone recognizes. Um, it was actually the boathouse for, let me find the name, Alpine Villa. Alpine Villa is the house that's behind the boathouse that you can see up there that had been extensively remodeled. So 
we didn't include it in our cottage collection, but um, we certainly included the boathouse because above the boathouse it was used as a, a, a guest residence for summer cottage people. And it was actually hand painted by the grandson of the owner. And the owner was Robert Ewald, and Robert Ewald was a city commissioner in, in Detroit. And he built this very um, large complex, as I call it. There were three buildings on it. The large house, the boat house, and then the next one, I think, will be their other guest house. And this guest house, um, it's this, the addresses, by the way, are on Cushing there. Um, 480 Cushing is the address of this residence for the Ewald family. And this is known as the Little Villa. So there, there was the big house, and then this was the Little Villa. And it's a little unusual in its orientation on the lake in that it almost looks like a river house, if any of you have seen river houses, where it's elongated along the shore rather than projecting backward from the shore. And so that's a bit unusual about it that it has that side to water deck going on. And um, so it was used as a guest house for the Alpine Valley, uh, Alpine Villa up above. And um, I'm hoping it's still there. I haven't been around to that. So, OK, good. <laughs> In the same form. And again, you can see how it's kind of built into the hill there and tucked in. Um, nicely into the side of the hill at the shoreline. The next slide actually shows that more. Uh, simply an example of how these, these simple houses were built into the property rather than overtaking the property. So the next um, slide would be 460 Cushing. And that is a boathouse on Pine Island. And maybe we're cheating a little bit because this actually was moved from the town onto a foundation built by the owner of that property. But um, it's, it's distinctive because it's just always been there and marked that island, which is actually Pine Island, opposite the boat launch, the public access. And the address is 460 Cushing. And it was moved to this island as a playhouse and then later positioned above the cement block um, Boat well built by the owner. So st still, the, it's kind of a um, decor decorative piece on the lake, in my view. So, with the wide back porch. Um, next, we have 495 North Shore Drive. It was known as Orion Oaks. It's my personal favorite on the lake. Um, it was formerly called Web Cliff before it was called Orion Oaks. It was. Um, owned by the Vischer family. I don't know if any of you are familiar or remember it, but um, it's at the, the end there of North Shore Drive, the point. And it's considered a sing, single, excuse me, shingle-style Georgian revival with mansion mansard roof. And its features, um, there's a, a, in the next slide, it has a huge open porch. Um, it has the wooden shutters it's still being used. And then it has columns with Doric capitals on top. Again, a notch above a simple cottage. Um, in the back there, it had the, what they called a summer kitchen. And this place also had um, servants who used the summer kitchen in the back for preparing meals for the owners and the parties that they had there. And um, in, it also had a garage which is a little uncommon for cottages. And uh, definitely was one of the close to mansion types on the lake in its day. It may not be fair, because this one is so beautiful. I agree. And still there, which is wonderful. Um, at the time that we did this project, Mr. Gruby owned it. I think he was on the village council then. And um, it's at 154 Grove Street. It was formerly known as Sibley Hall. Uh, Sibley was a lumber baron family and built this place as a summer residence here in Lake Orion. Uh, it has the hipped roof, which you can really see. It has Corinthian columns, which are, you know, the top of the top columns in terms of the Greek architecture. 
Um, one thing t interesting is that it has a thousand square feet of porch compared to 2,400 square feet of interior. So it's almost half porch. <laughs> and in the next view, you can see a side um, view of the porch, again, the wrapping around. And it's interesting, in our book, we have a view of the same angle from, I think, about 1910, with people up on that porch. Um, it really hasn't changed, which is refreshing. In the next, um, and there's a detail of the Corinthian column. And then in the next, we have um, the other side of the building. Yeah, the same building. And then it faces this uh, driveway. And it also has a garage, again, a step up from a simple cottage. And then it also had a boathouse, of course, on the side there. And the, bre the breezeway and attached garage were built by um, Mr. Gruby. I have that in my notes. So they were not necessarily original to the cottage. So, OK. And then we have our last set of cottages. And um, again, this is more of a cottage complex. These um, molded block buildings were built in the 30s. And um, there were five of them. Uh, they were, had names such as Highwood, Hillside, Cadillacqua, and Morningside. And then one was a more extensively remodeled uh, beach house at the lake. But these four buildings sat on, on the large lot um, up from the lake. And this first one that we saw was um, Cadillacqua. And I remember asking the owner if he knew what that meant, and he didn't at the time. So, but it definitely sounds like a, a Native American name. And of course, it, it has a screened in front porch. And in the next slide, um, you'll see the back of it, again, built into the sloping hill up from the lake with the molded block construction, even though it was built in the 30s. And then its partner, we only um, included two of them in this project, um, is Morningside. And this would be Morningside with an open porch um, and a large upper story porch considered to be called an American four-square architectural style. So um, I wanted to close <laughs> by telling you that, um, that in preparing for this program today, I was reminded of the numerous architectural styles and the uniqueness of the individual cottages on the lake that ranged from very small structures to mansions. Um, I was struck by the common consensus among cottage owners about how the cottages were used for family recreation and preserved in their families through second, third, and sometimes fourth generations. And today, I really don't have a handle on how many of these places are still there, but I'm getting a sense that many of them are, which is, is refreshing to me. And I'd like to say that there are vestiges of Lake Orion's historic past that are still evident in both in the built fabric in and around Lake Orion today. So I encourage the village and the township to care for what remains of its historic resources. And I commend the, the Lake Orion Township Public Library for being a steward of the township's history in the James Ingram Room. So thank you very much.